Hi everybody, what if I told you this tiny device here called a Trusted Platform Module, or TPM for short, could help make your computer more secure? All you have to do is install it into your motherboard, enable a few things in the BIOS, and tinker around a bit in Windows. If you want to know more about this curious little device, come along with me as I talk about what a Trusted Platform Module is, whether or not you need it, and the basics of how to use it. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Every time I saw the Trusted Platform Module connector while reviewing a motherboard for another video, I got more and more curious about it. I didn't know what a TPM was, and the questions about this connector kept piling up in my brain. What is it? What does it do? Who needs it? And of course, how do you use it? Well, after buying the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus motherboard, which I'm using in my test bench, I decided to also buy a TPM so I could answer these questions. I did some research and found out this little thing can do some pretty interesting things. With this newfound knowledge, I wanted to make this video here and share what I have learned with you. Hopefully this information will help you decide if you need a TPM for your PC. Before you decide to add a Trusted Platform module to your PC, you'll probably want to answer a few questions about it first. At a glance, a TPM is a secure crypto processor that provides additional security to your system on a hardware rather than software level to help defend against security threats such as boot kits, root kits, keystroke harvesters, ransomware, and other online attacks. It can also be used in addition to software-based security measures, and it can also generate and store passwords, certificates, and encryption keys. You can also use it to encrypt data on a hard drive, so if that hard drive is then removed from your TPM-enabled system, it can't be accessed and it essentially becomes a brick. In some cases, a TPM is built directly into the platform, either soldered on, such as with a server motherboard, or built into a CPU itself, like with Ryzen Pro CPUs, although this is at a firmware rather than hardware level. Ultimately, using a TPM reduces your system's risk at being compromised through identity validation, two-factor authentication, and data encryption. Another neat thing about the Trusted Platform module is this technology isn't just restricted to computers. You can find them in security cameras, phones, network routers, and more. After figuring out what a TPM is, you'll need to know whether or not you need one. This is a great question and one that can be answered with an, it depends. Mostly, large companies and their IT departments are the ones who make use of all the things a Trusted Platform module can do and provide. However, if you're a small business owner dealing with lots of data, an inventor who doesn't want the idea they've been working so hard on to get stolen or leaked, or if you're someone who has loads of sensitive data or puts their system at risk for whatever reason, then a TPM might be ideal for you. After you've determined if you should get a Trusted Platform module, you'll need to figure out how to get one. Since we're mostly focusing on PC users today, this comes down to the make and model of your motherboard, and whether or not it has a TPM connector to begin with. This can also apply to server motherboards, but you should check your manual to see if there is already a TPM chip soldered on. If you have a laptop, you may already have a TPM chip, but you can also check to see if you can add one to it if you don't. For those with a PC, this leads us to the next set of questions. Not all TPMs are created equal. There are different pin layouts and you'll need to match the module to your motherboard's connector. The easiest way to figure out which TPM to buy is to consult your motherboard manual or to go to your motherboard manufacturer's website. After you figure out which module you need, you can then see if the motherboard maker sells a TPM directly or you can do what I did and go to a third party site. I bought this TPM for my Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus off Amazon. Check out the video description below for links to various TPM modules sold there. Installation on a motherboard is pretty straightforward. Find the connector and then insert the module, making sure to orient it correctly. Next, start up your PC and go into the BIOS to enable the TPM. Where to enable it will depend on your motherboard's BIOS. Additionally, you may have to go into your BIOS twice, once to enable security device support and a second time to enable TPM state. Save your changes and go into Windows. Consult your TPM support page for additional information and help with installation should you get confused. I definitely recommend printing off any manuals or instructions prior to installation if you somehow mess things up. You want this information handy, so yeah, definitely print it. Finally, you may also need to update the TPM's firmware, so again, consult your module's support page for firmware updates and instructions on how to do that. 
I tried using the SPI TPM in my test bench. I couldn't get it to work. Every time I went into the BIOS, I couldn't see the TPM enabled state. I only saw the F TPM. That's for the firmware TPM that's actually on the CPU. So far, so what you're looking at here is the TPM connector right there for my Asus Dark Hero. So I'm gonna try it on that. I don't know if the SPI TPM for the Tough Gaming B550 Plus was broken or something else. So I'm going to try and use this, which, oh, which you can't see here, maybe over here. This is a TPM module specifically, um, well not specifically, but it's compatible with the Asus Dark Hero. It's an M key, it's still 14-1 pins, meaning it's 14 minus one pins. It is TPM 2.0 enabled. It has Asus's uh, logo on it, so maybe this will actually work. So right now I've just shut the machine down. I'm using my phone as a light source here so you can see, but I'm going to insert the module, start it up and get into the BIOS. So let's go ahead and install this. So let's see here, we need our, so it's gonna be logo up and hopefully I can do this one handed. It's probably a lot easier. I didn't have a GPU in the way. Let's see it there. Okay, so yeah, so that's what it looks like. And uh, you can see it installed. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and turn the sucker on and see what happens. All right, so this is awesome. Um, so this is the only thing that, this is what appears only when um, you don't have the module in. This is what's supposed to appear once you plug the module in. The trusted computing on my B550 Plus um, was not coming up, I don't know. So maybe I just had a, a bum module. So anyway, now I can go ahead and show how to enable the TPM once you have it plugged in within the BIOS. So you're gonna, once you go into your BIOS, you'll be actually in easy mode. So you should just start off in easy mode. Uh, if, you've, if you've only been in your BIOS to set the DOCP or XMP profile, then you'll hit your F7 key, and then that will get you into advanced mode. You'll be on the main to start with. So you just tab over, arrow over twice to get to advanced and then you should see trusted computing so hit return so we have our TPM 2.0 device found this is the latest standard 2.0 um, so we have enabled all right let's see what we need I don't see your schedule operation da, 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 da. we shouldn't have to do too much I don't know what that is all right we'll just leave that okay override allow okay so everything's enabled. We should be able to just go ahead and exit out of this and go into Windows and go from there. We got it to work, I'm very happy. So again, that trusted computing needs to appear uh, for you to be able to enable it. And it looks like we're already automatically enabled on everything, so that needs to be enabled. Other than this disable block SID and I don't know what that means, so. Um, from here, we can, again, get into Windows and see if the thing shows up within the tpm.msc software. Now that you have the TPM installed and enabled within the BIOS, you should be able to see it in your device manager when you boot into Windows. Then you can enable it to do various things such as set a login and password for your system. The TPM will guard the data rather than have it stored on your OS drive. You can generate and manage cryptographic keys to lock the system or specific files. You can also enable Windows BitLocker drive encryption utility. When you power up your PC with TPM and BitLocker enabled, the chip runs a series of conditional tests to see if it's safe to boot up the machine or use the hard drive. Keep in mind, BitLocker encrypts entire hard drives or partitions, not individual files. If a TPM senses the hard disk was moved to another location, as might be the case if it were stolen, it locks the system, or in the case of a stolen drive, the removed drive won't work without being plugged back into the system with the TPM. Once you've installed the TPM module and enabled it within the BIOS, after you restart your computer and you want to check to see that the TPM module is recognized by the OS, you can click the Windows button and then in the search field type tpm.msc. A window should pop up with the Trusted Platform Management tool and you'll be able to see whether or not your TPM module is recognized. You have a couple of options here, one of which is to clear the TPM and what this will do will clear any stored passwords on it. I highly recommend that you do that 
especially if you buy the TPM used or from a third party seller, as you might not know whether or not it's been used previously. Once you clear the TPM, you're gonna have to reboot your machine and go into Windows again. And after that, you should be ready to go to set up BitLocker or any other kind of encryption that you want. Encrypting a hard drive with BitLocker is actually pretty straightforward as well. Simply click the Windows icon in the lower left hand of your screen or just click the Windows key on your keyboard. Type in BitLocker, click that tool, and go into BitLocker Drive Encryption. If you have multiple drives like I do, choose the hard drive you want to encrypt and then just begin the process. So select the hard drive, click turn on BitLocker, and then choose the method of, uh, of unlocking either password or through a smart card. Once you selected your password or created it, click Next then choose how to back up your recovery key. Again, for just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to save to a file. I recommend don't save to a file on your actual machine. Put it somewhere safe, maybe on a USB drive, or handwrite it or print it off, and then put it somewhere safe. So there you can see that I've saved the file. Now we can encrypt the disk space used or the entire drive. I'm gonna go ahead and the use disk space only as that will be faster and there's not really much on this and because I imagine a eight terabyte drive to encrypt would take a while. After you made your choice, click next. Now we have two different kind of modes that we can enable. We're gonna just go ahead and go with the new encryption mode as this is a fixed drive and it's not going to be moved. If you're gonna have something that's like removable, then you'll probably want to go ahead and use the compatible mode. And then you just go ahead and click start encrypting. And again, the length of time that this takes will vary on how much data you have to encrypt, the size of your hard drive, etc. Once you have your selected drive encrypted through BitLocker, you're going to want to restart your machine so that now the drive shows up as locked. And here you can see it is indeed locked. If you want to access your drive, you just double click on it and you'll see this BitLocker password uh, window come up. Enter your password, click unlock. It'll take a little bit of time. It unlocks, opens a new window, and boom, you can now access the data. Now this hard drive, while an eight terabit drive, doesn't have very much in there. It's why I encrypted it in case things went wrong. Uh, I wouldn't be losing out on much. It's really just my DaVinci Resolve backups, database backups, which I have elsewhere. So let's say you wanna relock the hard drive. Unfortunately, there's no option to simply just right click and find a lock option on your contextual menu. I don't know why Windows doesn't make this easier to lock a hard drive. The only way to relock your hard drive is to essentially reboot the machine, but that's not always very convenient. What if you wanna let your kid use the computer, but you want that hard drive protected? Well, instead what you can do is you can do a few things. You can muck with the command prompt, your PowerShell or a registry file in order to enable that contextual option to show up. Additionally, you can also download third-party software. I have found some websites, and I'll go ahead and put this in, link in the description below, that provides the multiple ways you can employ to be able to relock a hard drive without restarting your machine. I don't know why this isn't default in Windows, and I think it's a really kind of stupid, because there are instances where I'm gonna just wanna relock the hard drive, I don't need to reboot, I don't need to you know, shut down the whole machine. I wanna be able to use my machine, but I want that extra added security of knowing that hard drive or file or whatever is encrypted and it won't mess with anything. I think going through a the command prompt or PowerShell so that it's just you know here uh, within the contextual menu would probably be the best option. I don't I don't know about having to use third party software to enable that functionality. I think that could be compromised or something. I don't know. It's just 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 me. Let me know what you think. I'll go ahead and put this link in the description so that you can figure out how to relock the hard drive or set it up without rebooting the machine. Finally, what happens if you no longer want to have a uh, machine? encrypted, your hard drive encrypted. Well, simply go ahead and go back to BitLocker, manage BitLocker, and all you have to do is turn off BitLocker. Drive will be decrypted, this might take a long time, blah, 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 turn it off. Okay, decryption drive has started, click for more information. All right, it's complete, because there's really nothing on this hard drive. All right, so now it's off. So I would probably recommend you reboot your machine Again, just to double check, and then you'll be able to remove your TPM module if you no longer need it and use your computer as normal. Now, I realize this video isn't a comprehensive guide to all things you can do with the trusted platform module, and it's definitely not a how-to guide on encrypting data. It never was really meant to be that. I was just curious about the TPM connector and the thing that plugged into it, so I bought one to see what it was and researched it. I also wanted to share what I learned with you guys. There's a lot to know about using a trusted platform module, and if you're interested in using one, I definitely urge you to do additional research. Acting as a sort of springboard to help you, I've included links to some articles in the description below.
And that's all I have to say about the Trusted Platform module. It's pretty nifty and I hope to learn more about it. What do you guys think about the TPM? Will you end up getting one for your PC to keep it more secure? Let me know in the comments below. At the very least, hopefully what I covered here today will sh has shed some light on what this motherboard connector is for and what the module can do. Thanks for exploring this topic with me and thanks for watching everybody. Hit that like button if you found this video educational or helpful or just liked what you saw and feel free to share any questions or comments you have down below. I'll do my best to answer them. You can show your support for the channel by clicking subscribe and don't forget to hit that notifications icon so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, feel free to stick around and check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.